Hey everybody, I wanted to do an impromptu live uh, for dry January. So if you have any questions or there's anything that I can help you with today, I wanted to spend a few minutes with you and see what you have going on. So happy new year, everybody. Welcome, um, happy dry January. If you're participating, I'm here to answer questions for the next like 10 minutes or so. So let me know what's on your mind. Let me know how I can help. Um, and I'd love to get you going for dry January. So thanks for being here. I hope you guys are waking up hangover free. I hope that you're ready to start the new year and you're feeling good about yourself and positive. Any questions, just pop them in the chat and I will answer whatever I can. And if there are no questions, then I'll get right back off and let you guys enjoy your New Year's Day. Uh, congratulations on not drinking since Christmas. That's a huge accomplishment. The days between Christmas and New Year's are so weird. So it's probably really easy to talk yourself back into drinking. So you should be very proud of yourself. Day five, amazing. Congratulations. Anyone who's feeling like I can't do it around the holidays or the new year, like you absolutely can. Lots of people are doing it. I uh, would love to hear about substitute drinks. So it depends um, if they trigger you or not. I have an episode on my podcast, episode 77, which is about how non-alcoholic drinks can affect the brain. They can be triggering and make you want the real thing. Um, they can make you feel like you're working hard at your drinking and you're wasting your time, like you should just go have the real thing. Or they can be really helpful and they can kind of fill that void of needing a tasty drink. So it depends on you. There's a lot of different NA beers. That's probably the easiest thing to start with. My only recommendation for you would be don't start with whatever your drink was. So if you were a wine drinker, maybe start with non-alcoholic beer and feel that out instead of going straight for the non-alcoholic wine. Um, what is the best way to get support to stay sober? There are so many options. I think that you should just try a bunch of things and see what works best for you. Um, basically, anyone you follow here is gonna have some method of support for you. There's small group programs. Um, mine's actually starting in 15 minutes, so I'm really excited for day one of my Dry Jan program. There's one-on-one -on -one coaching from people. I recommend that everybody goes to therapy. So if you Google psychology today, find a therapist. You can sort by your insurance and your location. Um, there's online communities. I have one with meetings and uh, we're really nice in there. We love cats and dogs. So if you like pets, you can come hang out with us. You could do in-person meetings, AA, Smart Recovery, Recovery Dharma. There are so many options. Um, just keep trying things until you find the right fit for you. But um, I'm glad that you're looking for support. I think that's a big barrier is recognizing that you can't do it alone or that you don't have to do it alone. 104 days. Amazing. Congratulations. That's a huge accomplishment. Uh, thoughts on Heineken Zero? I think it's awesome. I drank a ton of non-alcoholic beer when I quit drinking. Also in that episode that I was referencing, episode 77 of my podcast, um, I talk about the 0.5% drinks and all about how that affects the brain and if that's okay to drink. But anything non-alcoholic is fine as long as it doesn't trigger you. If it triggers you, then that's good to know and don't even bother trying them because there's lots of stuff to drink that's not alcohol or uh, a non-alcoholic version. Um, any other questions, just put them in the chat. Can you do partial dry Jan? Um, do you mean like quit for two weeks and then go back? Or do you mean like damp 
January where you moderate. Um, I think those are two different things. I think any amount of time that you quit is awesome. If you quit for one week and that's all you can do, you learn stuff in that one week. Even one day or two days, you still learn something because you're existing in your life without alcohol. So any amount of dry time is beneficial. Um, I don't think that damp Jan where you moderate is a good idea because, I mean, you've probably already been trying to moderate, right? So I don't think you need an official month where you continue to try to moderate. I don't think that's very useful. And I think if you're still obsessing about drinking and obsessing about controlling it, you're not going to have benefits. You're not going to get that experience where you go through life not drinking. And I know your goal might be to moderate, and mine was too, but I would still encourage you to do a full break for whatever feels comfortable for you. My first break was only seven days. So you don't have to set like this huge goal to do like a hundred days or something like that. You can get a lot from just seven days. So that's my recommendation. Uh, been alcohol free for three years, still using food as a substitute. Any ideas? Yeah, this is a hard one. I was going crazy on the sugar for a long time, which I also talked about on my podcast. I think it was 165, episode 165. I took a 30 day break and reported about it. Uh, I would say go to therapy. Food and alcohol. Um, it's easy to flip-flop between two different problems. I struggled with food and disordered eating first, and then uh, as I went to therapy and that got better, I started drinking. So it's really easy to just flip-flop back and forth between food and alcohol. If it's a struggle for you and you've been trying to um, improve your relationship with food and you can't, I would say go to therapy with someone that specializes in that. Um, I'm also getting certified. I'm starting next month in a program as a food addiction coach. Um, so I'm gonna have more information probably here and on my podcast and I'll have programs to support people that have that issue too because I know that there's a big relationship so follow my podcast if you're not so that you can get all this exciting info. But definitely therapy, like therapy for all. We all need it. Had my first sober New Year's in a long time. I'm so proud of you. I hope that you're feeling good today. I hope that you're feeling like a little smug because there are so many hungover people, but not you, not this year. And and probably not ever again. Imagine if you could go into every new year not feeling like trash. How good would that be? Um, your podcast helped me get sober last year and I am so ready to quit again. Day two for me. I'm glad you're back on track. I'm glad that my podcast has been helpful for you and I hope that whatever happened a couple of days ago that you're looking into different forms of support because um, you don't have to do it by yourself. And I'm here for you, and my podcast is also here for you. Um, evenings are hard for me. This is where I give in to having wine. Any suggestions for the evening? Uh, yes. <laughs> this is actually what um, my first call is about with my Dry January group. It, today, we're talking about um, our the times that we would normally drink and trying to identify our cues. And what I did in my first month of not drinking is I did not even go in the same room. I would say change your behavior. I used to get drunk on the couch and watch TV all night. So in the first year, in the first month, sorry, I didn't watch TV at all. I didn't even go in my living room. So I would say change the environment, change your activity. If you just remove alcohol and you keep trying to live the exact same life, it's a life full of triggers and cues to drink. And we give up our hobbies and everything 
so that we can drink. So without alcohol, that life is pretty empty. I had no hobbies or activities that I enjoyed. I just like to sit around and drink. Sitting around not drinking is pretty boring. Uh, is vaping bad? Yeah, it is. Um, I'm, I don't have expertise on that, but that's all I gotta say. I would look up some more information on that or talk to your doctor or find a group, but if you're interested in quitting vaping, I think that's a great first start. I know that's so hard to quit vaping. I've had a few people in my community that have said that that's harder for them than not drinking. So just know that like you're not the only one struggling with that. Um, let me see. The dopamine rush that I get from sugar is as powerful as the alcohol was. I have almost 200 days sober, congratulations. So I have to tackle the sugar in the new year. Good luck, it is very difficult. Uh, they're actually starting a challenge today in my group that they told me about this morning um, in my Living a Sober Powered Life community for no sugar for the new year. Uh, so I'm going to observe that challenge and see how they do, but I think that's a common struggle for people who quit drinking. So I'm glad that you're aware of it. Um, I'm eight months sober today. Congratulations, that's fantastic. And thank you to my sober community on social media. This is my first sober holiday season in 45 years. That is so inspiring. I'm really, really happy for you. And I hope that you're doing something nice for yourself for eight months today. That's a fantastic milestone. Hey, Mary Alice, good morning. Uh, New here, almost two months sober, congratulations. Feeling great, worried I might impulsively relapse on some normal day like I did last time. Uh, very common fear around that time. And actually, I'm gonna have Mary Alice on my podcast soon. We're just setting a date right now to talk about that fear. Um, so stay tuned for that episode. But if you impulsively drink and you don't know why, I did an episode about that like a, a, sometime in December about why you drink without thinking about it. It was in the early 180s, so go check that out. Um, if that's happening to you, I think that you need to look into some more support so that you have um, some accountability so whether that's a sponsor, AA meetings, virtual meetings, a therapist, a coach, whatever it is, you think about that support when you have the impulse. And hopefully that gives you enough pause where you don't follow through. So more support, and it's very normal to have that fear. Uh, The group, is that the group on Circle? Yes, uh, the Circle community. So if you wanna join my community, it's on an app called Circle. You can use it on the app or you can use it on your computer, whatever. Let me see. Do you write a book about your podcast? I am from Italy and sometimes it's difficult for me to understand. It would be easier reading what you say. Actually guys, I am writing a book. Uh, you heard it first. I haven't announced it. I am writing a book myself and the launch date is January 1st, 2025. Um, I'm self-publishing it, which I don't know how to do, but I'll figure it out. So one year from today, you can read my book. So stay tuned. Keep hanging out with me. Um, Okay, I have to go in a second. Six years sober today, congratulations. That is so amazing. Um, and that's it, guys, I gotta go. I have my dry January group in five minutes that I have to get on, but I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and asking questions. Um, and I'll see you again soon. And I hope you have a great New Year's Day.